we just whoever missed it like some people ask for it so we just start like we send it out to people okay whoever missed you already it said you didn't mind so i hit record so <laughs> <laughs> no backseas, basically, right? <laughs> they can do whatever they want with these. You're a businesswoman. Once you make the sale, guess what? People are ready. Can I miss it? Could you get me a recording? That's cute. Okay. It's cute. I'll be right back. Oh, and Julie, you'll have the recording also. It's under your name, too. Do you have a Zoom account? Yeah. Uh, okay. If it doesn't come to you, let me know. I'll send it. Okay. Actually, we should just send it to Jack. Why do you even have to flood up your? I don't know. How do I ha like? How do I save it once I um? Like you open up your Zoom and you go to where it says recordings, and and it just lives there. And I put them in the cloud. I don't put them on my computer because it's a lot of right. Yeah. I I don't know. Julie sent me last week. Yeah, it. yeah, it's, that's what I'm saying. It's a lot of recording, so I just send it to the cloud, and then sometimes Jack will take a little, little snippet of it here or there. Um, sometimes we'll post them on the website after. Most of the time, it's just one or two people that have missed it that might want to jump on, you know, and hear it. Okay, now I'm really going to be quiet, so. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great talk. Or one second. Here they come, Marlene. Here's your mom. Hey, Ma. <laughs> oh, there's my mother in law. But I don't see her face. I see her name. I'll just try. Okay. Hi, I mean. Oh, it's Zoom, Irene? What do you think it is? Oh, you look so pretty. You Julie, look so pretty. Julie, mute the audience. Oh, you look so pretty. <laughs> love, love, love. Let's get Chucky in the video. Get him in there. Hey. <laughs> Hi. Hi, all. Welcome. Um. Irene, you can't see us though, right? No, you don't. Like okay. Just make sure you can't see us. Mute us, mute us. Wait, should we be muted, Irene? You want us to mute? No, it's fine. Whatever you want. Oh, you look stunning. If you can do that, then yes, you can do that. Okay, I'll mute. So pretty. And the background looks gorgeous. Okay, we're ready. It's not 8 o'clock, honey. You gotta mute it. <laughs> Marlene. Hi, Marlene. You look stunning, too. Thank you. You're in Paris? <laughs> Gorgeous. Very nice. I'm trying to be. <laughs> Gorgeous. Natural beauty. Anyone yeah, who's really naturally beautiful, if they could look stunning after 50 days in their house alone with no uh, beauty parlors. and One day we had to get dressed, right? Yeah. The beauty parlors are overrated. You both look great. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're ready. You do too. It's not eight o'clock.
You see my face? Hi, Dad. Huh? Yeah, there's Dad. <laughs> You're not supposed to see me. <laughs> you see me? No. Your video is off. You heard me yelling at that. <laughs> Hi, babe. <laughs> hey. Hi, Bob. It's like rocker room. Hi, Molly. Who's that? Your aunt. Estelle. Hi, I don't see you, but I hear you. And I took my picture off. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> We're waiting to hear from you. Hi, Marlene. Hi. How are you doing? All good. Oh, look, I'm officially part of the casting family, Frida. <laughs> We'll start in like three, four minutes. Okay. Marlene, it's quiet by you. You locked everyone in a closet. Well, they might come running out, but <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Molly. Yeah. Molly. Yeah. You look gorgeous. Who is that? Hi, Liz. I miss you. Ah, you look gorgeous. <laughs> Love you. Thank you. I don't know. I don't know. I don't Marlene, I feel like we're getting you live from Paris with the Eiffel Tower behind you. Yeah, I'm trying <laughs> to be. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. That's a quarantine and you left. <laughs> <laughs> I closed my eyes and I'm there. Hi, I wish. I mean, stop it. Who's that, Nathan? I want to see. Hi, Nathan. Hi, Jacob. Hi, Sammy. <laughs> you all look nice. You all look nice and ready for sleepy time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I see uh, uh, Sari and Jacob. Hi, guys. That is Hi. <laughs> Mommy, like you sign up? It's still reading. 
we're reading in bed. I said, oh, let me turn this on. Otherwise, I'm never getting to it. Perfect. Molly. Stunning, Molly. Yes, I think so. Okay, fine. So whenever you're ready. Whenever you're ready, Irene. Okay, I'm ready. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. I'm Irene Hannon, and tonight's talk is with Marlene Beebe. Marlene is a dedicated wife and mother and the owner of the Children's Clothing Boutique My Gap in New York, Brooklyn. Marlene, as you all know, is personable, she's professional, and she's fashionable. She's going to talk to us about how she started My Get Up, how she grew the business, and about how she's dealing with the current situation. If at the end there's any questions, you can write them in the chat at the end, and I'll read them, and we'll do a little Q&A if there's anything we missed. Also, I want to thank Julie Shehebar and Ralph Mizrahi. They've been working on these soup talks, and they're doing a fantastic job getting great guests and bringing us all together during quarantine to learn and hopefully get something positive out of this situation. And of course, I have to mention our sector and how hard everyone from the volunteers to the staff are working to bring us content for every age and every interest. And hopefully, we'll be back in the buildings again soon. So okay. the first thing, Marlene, that we wanted to start to talk about was what inspired you to start your business? Tell us from the beginning of my get up. Okay, so it began about uh, seven years ago is when I first started. Um, the idea triggered eight years ago. I was um, shopping one day and I had two bags in my hands. One was an outfit for myself, a cute little dress from Vanilla Sky. Um, and then I had another bag of a jacket that I had bought for my son and it was $200 and I was walking and I was holding the two bags and I was thinking to myself does it make sense um, the kids God bless them they're gonna grow out of it they're gonna stain it um, they're playing football walking home from school they're gonna rip those pants they're gonna wipe pizza sauce on their shirts um, and I wanted to let them I didn't want to feel bad every time that they, you know, kids should be kids. And I really felt like there was um, a lack in the community of a store like that where we could have like affordable fashion for kids that they look great, but they don't have to spend, you know, so much money. So that was my, my idea. Um, and then, um, there was one day that I, you know, I had to get the guts to do it. So in the summertime, um, there was an angel fund event oh, wow. and I had women um, speaking, um, all entrepreneurs that you were community members. And they were talking about, I still remember what they said, it stays with me. Um, Norma Cohen was up there. Um, she spoke about how to remain professional when you're dealing in business in the community and how to treat the family. Everyone's your family. Everyone's your friends. Always remain professional. Um, I remember um, Marlene Towell. She got up. She spoke about um, when she had to take a, a space and how she had to think about, should I take the bigger space? Should I take the smaller space? And I remember her saying, if you build it, they will come. And those things really stayed with me throughout my, my business experience. Um, when I had to take a new store, um, you know, anytime I had something going on in the store, it always stayed with me. Um, but that really motivated me to, my, to say to myself, it's something that I could do. Um, and also Instagram was very new at the time. And I was figuring it out and I was noticing how you don't have to have a store. You could post things, take a beautiful picture and the customers are there in, you know, in my house with me shopping. So I thought that was very intriguing, um, a very low risk way to start. And it excited me. So I would say like those are the three main things that got me going. Wow, amazing that you remember everything that they said that was really stuck with you. So what about your background? Do you have any business training? Do you want to talk about what you needed to start, you know, what startup funding you had when you decided to? So um, when I was single, I worked in Bright Eyes. Um, I got engaged in that store. So it's very precious to me, my time there. Um, I learned a lot there. I learned how to 
I have customer service with the community members. Um, I learned how to merchandise. I learned how to break boxes. You know, all the things that you need to learn about retail, I learned there. Um, later on, about, I would say, five, six years ago, no, longer than that, sorry, 10, 12 years ago, I'm losing track of time, um, I had an accessory business, costume jewelry, um, and it was, I had a cute little concession, and it gave me a little flavor of, of what it was like to have expenses and be in a retail atmosphere. Um, whatever mm -hmm. money I had made from that, from Bright Eyes, I put away in a cute little savings account. <laughs> it was too precious to spend. Um, and I said, you know, I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but when I need it, I'll pull it out. Um, and then when I had my business idea, there was my seed money. It was waiting for me. Well, I, I didn't have to borrow or ask anyone. It was something that I was able to do on my own. Thank God. Um, so tell us about any early obstacles that you faced and how you overcame them. So, um, I, I would say understanding the business side of things was, was a big challenge in the beginning. Um, my husband is extremely patient. Um, all I had to say was, this is what I want to do. And he, he taught me everything uh, from opening a bank account to using a debit card, writing checks, um, you know, managing expenses and costs and all of that. That was something that I knew nothing about. Um, then finding the product was really hard. Um, I really want, was very particular about that it had to have the fashion, it had to have um, the right price, and it had to wash well. So I would, you know, it took me a long time till I found what I liked. And then I would test it out. I would see if the customers liked it. I would wash it myself before I would sell it. Um, you know, of course, I wouldn't sell what I washed, but I... I wanted to see if I liked the way it looked afterwards. It was important that it would have the right quality, but um, you know, be the right price also. Um, and any other obstacles? Getting the customers, that was hard. Um, even though I had Instagram, I, I, like, people have to know that you exist. And a great way that I found was the boutique shows. Um, the center, there were many boutique shows, but the center was awesome. Um, I would go, I would set up, um, my kids would help me. And it was a great way just to get the word out and build a customer base. Right, low risk, not so much of a commitment, you're just paying for the boutique. Exactly, yeah. Um, okay, is there a characteristic or a trait that you have that you feel helped propel you and helped you be successful in this business? One thing that you could point at that you think is something uh, so it helps that I love to shop. <laughs> it helps that I love fashion. Shop, that we all love to shop. Yeah, I love, always love fashion. I always love to shop. Um, you could ask my mother. I think I lived in her closet. I tried on every Manola Blahnik and whatever it is that she had. Um, and I think also a big thing is that I, I'll ne anything that I commit to, I want to do it to its fullest. So whatever it takes to get it done, I'm doing it. So I need to take my time before I commit. But once I commit, I'm going all the way. So I think that's an important thing that helped me get through it and, and last for so long. Perfect, perfect answer, I love that. Um, what about someone that you, or something that you credit as being an inspiration? I know you spoke about those early to Norma and Marlene, but someone else that gave you good advice one-on-one -on -one or some inspiration that you think back on? Or... Yeah, so one thing that really stands out, um, when I was ready to take my store, I had called Milo Dweck from Milo Maternity. Now she has the, um, the store on Kings Highway, Milo on 2nd. Right. And I just called her because I saw the store and I was curious you know, why she left and if she liked it and her experience there. And that's all I had to do was call her for one thing. She called me maybe once a week. Wow. 
um, asking how she could help, giving me phone numbers, giving me contacts. And I was so afraid to make the move. And every minute she would call me up and she would say, you could do it, you're gonna do great, you're awesome, people love you. She was so encouraging. And the fact that she um, is a businesswoman and we had so much in common in that way where um, you know, we, we deal with the community and we're mothers and we're balancing a lot of things. So her advice was very valuable and it definitely gave me a big push. Um, family is number one um, and friends, you know, they're always uh, encouraging. They're proud of me no matter what I do in every part of, of my life, not just with work. And so that always, you know, gives me that motivation to keep on going. That. Okay, so that's perfect because you were talking about Milo pushing you, pushing you forward. Um, so now I want to talk about how do you recognize that it's time for that big step to make a riskier choice and take the store and grow the business from the boutique shows and the Instagram and your house? Had right. That. Yes. So um, the house, I was really treating it like a store. I had created hours that were consistent. I wanted to be professional. I wanted everyone to know you know, even though I'm a mother, it's still, a, it's a store. It had, it's gonna be open from 10 to six and we're mm -hmm. here for you, whatever you need. Um, but I felt it was already at its plateau and I was getting out of it as much as I could possibly get. Um, whoever was coming because they needed me was coming. Whoever didn't want to come because they don't want to go to a house, they weren't coming. So I felt like I was ready to, um, to get a little more exposure, um, you know, of, and I was really ready to move to the next level. Okay, great. Um, okay, could we talk about how owning and running your own business and being such a businesswoman affects the way you're raising your children and how they view you and how that works? Yeah, so that's the hardest part, I think. <laughs> um, when I first started, the business. Um, in my mind, I said to myself, I never want to look back one day and say, um, why didn't I give my kids more time? And so that was, that's always in my mind with every decision I make, um, they always come for, first. Um, so there's a lot of juggling that gets involved. Um, but I also use it as a vehicle for parenting. So what I mean by that is I grew up in a home where I wasn't really told what to do and how to be. I was, I was shown by example, you know, I watched my parents and I learned from them just from watching the way they did things. And so if I want to teach my kids something, I'm not going to tell them what I want to teach them. I'm, I want them to learn from seeing it and being a part of it. So um, I want them to learn that if they are really hardworking and they believe in something, it could be successful. I wanted them to learn that you can be many things in your life if you want to. You can wear many hats. You don't have to limit yourself. Um, and besides all of that, it's a great way for kids to learn skills of business. Um, they would come to the store. They would help me pack up the boutique shows. Um, I have one son who loves graphic design. He does all my flyers and graphic work for me. Um, they know how to ring up sales. They know how to deal with customers. Um, you name it, inventory. They know how to enter it into the computer. Uh, my husband grew up in the retail world and he believes that teaching kids skills, business skills, there's no setting like the retail setting. And they really, really picked up on a lot of it. And this is things that they're gonna need to know, you know, God bless them. They're gonna have to support families, God willing, one day. And this is, this is a good way for them to learn from a young age. Unbelievable, you're endlessly inspiring and so well spoken. <laughs> hey, unbelievable. Um, okay, so the talk is called Learning to Juggle. So I guess that's what you were talking about now, but what about tips, practical tips for a working woman or someone who wants to take that plunge but is afraid they won't be able to succeed at both? Right, so I think it's very important to know yourself, um, know what's important to you, 
and list it in your mind and say, you know, exercise is important. My friends are important. My family is important. Um, my business is important. My community work is important. You know, have a basic idea of what you're passionate about and know that you have to find the right balance and give the proper time and attention to each of those things when you can. Um, so along the way, I, I change it because the house changes, kids get older, um, my needs change. So, you know, where I put my time is, is very well thought out. Um, you know, I love to entertain, I love to have company, but also the holiday season is when my store is crazy. So in my head, from in advance, I plan the holiday. I'm not going to make Rosh Hashanah because I'm not Superwoman. I'm working till the minute before the holiday, so I'm not doing that. Um, but Sukkot is coming in two weeks. And by then, the store tapers down, and I could now, um, you know, I could have more time to, to get my table ready, make a menu, freeze a few things. So really knowing that you could fit it in when you could fit it in. Um, Passover season ends, I call my friends, let's play cards, you know, it's fitting it all in and um, being very aware of it and not getting lost in it. Um, I would tell all the women that are listening, if you want to do it, you can, but you need the support. Um, you definitely 100% need the support of your family. It's very, very hard to get it done without it. Um, a year ago when I opened the store on, on Avenue U, I was interviewing someone, she was a, mo a mother a little bit older than me, and I felt like she would be a perfect fit in the store. Um, and I, I was telling her, you know, come on, you'll come in, you'll be great. And she really wanted the job. She had called me the next day. She says, I don't know if I could do it. I said, well, let me help you, like, tell me why. So she said, well, my husband doesn't want me to. My kids don't want me to, they need me. And everyone's just telling me no. So I, even though I knew she would be great, I told her, look, right. I really don't think you should do it. I said, if they're not gonna, you know, encourage you along the way, you're not gonna be happy. You're gonna feel like you're being pulled so many, in so many different ways. And so you really have to know you know, your family dynamic and, you know, where you're needed. And if you have the support, you can do it. But if you don't, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> That's my opinion. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that's it on that topic. Okay, great answer. Um, okay, Islan, are you considering expanding to more locations? Um, so, when my father came to see my store, he said to me, oh, you can make a hundred train tours just like this. <laughs> <Good point. laughs> and the truth is I'm happy. I don't like to say never because we can't predict anything, um, but I'm happy with what's on my plate right now. Um, I think it would be cute one day if my boys, you know, wanted to take it to the next level and, and do that, then that would be great. But that's up to them. Um, okay, talk to me a little bit about what motivates you and what pushes you forward, what keeps you going. So, um, being in business is tough and it's not always glorious, even if you love what you do. Um, there's a lot that goes into it and there's a lot of bad days. Um, but I like clockwork, like just sometimes I'm ready to throw in the towel and give up. I'll get like a text message from a customer thanking me, or I'll get a picture of, you've done it, you sent me a picture of your son. <laughs> you know, that's my favorite picture of him. I'm all like, dressed in his tuxedo, and something inside of me just gets so, um, it just ignites, it just pushes me forward, and it, it gives me that feeling of fulfillment, like, like I'm really doing something that people like, and people appreciate, and feel good about, and so that's really like the number one thing that keeps me pushing through. I love that. Um, okay, what positive effects does your business have on you personally? 
So there are really a lot of answers for that one. <laughs> um, so with anything we do in our life, we want to make sure that it has a, a positive impact because if, if not, then what are we doing it for? Um, and like I said, if I was, uh, when I would think of quitting or anything like that, I would say to myself, is, is work positively affecting me? Is it good for me? Because if it's not good for me and I'm not growing from it, then why am I doing it? Um, so there's that feeling of fulfillment, like I mentioned. Um, there's the feeling of uh, really appreciation for our husbands and all that they do. I mean, to build a business, to succeed at it, to make money, it's very, very hard. And it's something that I really think I took for granted until I did it myself. Yeah. And sometimes you do everything right and you don't succeed at it. And we have to really, you know, I, I got to learn that by being in business. Um, I also uh, got a greater sensitivity um, towards other women in business and other people in business in general. Um, when I'm the customer and I went into a store, I understand what it takes and I understand the struggles and I understand the things that make it harder. And I would never want to do that to someone else. So there's a greater respect for each other when you could understand the other side of things. So I think that's very important. Um, trying to think of, oh, uh, I, I also was, I don't want to say timid, but I needed to become stronger. Um, whenever I had confrontational issues with people, it was very hard for me. Um, this made me definitely stronger. Um, um, it, you know, I built really uh, business relationships with people from, uh, you know, around the world and not just in the community. And you have to really be a strong person, fight for your money. Um, those are all things that I really learned from it. Unreal. I'm watching your mother and father being so proud of you. They're beaming. <laughs> and I can't, I'm getting emotional. So you know, also, I want to mention that... Um, Really, one of the greatest things is being in a position where you could help other people. Um, so now I have my own tzedakah that I could give. And it's very, very precious to me that I'm able to make a difference on my own. Um, there was also an incident that happened. This is just one example, but it happens very often. And I'm so grateful that I'm able to, to make a difference. Um, a couple of summers ago, I woke up one morning, I looked at my phone, and there was a text message that there was a family, that their house burnt down. Yeah, I remember that. And thank God all the kids were okay, everyone got out, um, but I was, my heart just broke. I said, how could I help? So right away, I called SBH, I called uh, Rena from Dress a Child, I said, look, I just dropped off four big bags of clothing to your office. Um, look through it and let's get clothing together for this family. Mm -hmm. Contacted the family. We found out their sizes. Um, and she went through the bags and we were able to drop them a lot of clothing. But besides that, I, I thought, how could I take it a step further? I went into my phone, I drafted an email, and I sent an email to maybe four or five different suppliers that oh. I bought from. And I told them, look, uh, this is what happened. We had a tragedy in the community. How can you help? I listed the sizes. I told them they only wear white shirts. They only wear solid ties. And I told them exactly what we needed. And within an hour, I had commitments from five, six different vendors for free. They sent it to me just because of the relationship I had with them. Um, if I wasn't in business, something like that could have never, I mean, I could have wrote, written a check. That's beautiful too. But this was another big way that I could help. And it felt really, really good to be able to do that. Beautiful story. That's beautiful. Um, okay, so we're going to go from that beautiful, heartwarming story to talking about what's going on now. And 
and tell us a little bit about how the virus and the quarantine is affecting your business, affected your business. Yeah, so there's no sugar coating it. It's um, devastating. I think it's the biggest challenge I was ever faced with um, when it came to the business. Uh, you know, one day I was selling a suit and, and school pants, and the next day I had to lock the door to my store. It was very, you know, no warning, very, very um, scary and uh, hard. It's hard. Um, you know, I, um, I'm able, because I work in the community, I'm able to, um, you know, drop eggs to people, deliver gifts, do FaceTime. So that's, that's a nice, uh, you know, plus. But of course, it's not the same. Right. And um, I think the, the main thing to remember is that nothing lasts forever and things get better. You know, history proves it. Nothing, nothing's gonna always stay the way it is. There's ups and there's downs and we'll move past it. But you gotta stay positive and you be helpful to the customers however you could possibly help and you wait it out. Hope for the best. Mm -hmm. um, what about some lessons? You said this is one of the most challenging things. Any lessons that you could take that you learned from it? Or are learning from it still? Yeah, so if you ask me six weeks ago, do I 100% believe that Hashem controls the world? I would say yes. And if you ask me, do I 100% believe that my success is up to Hashem? I would say yes. Mm -hmm. And would I believe that my health was 100% up to Hashem? I would say yes. But I could stand in front of you today and tell you that I believe it more now than I did then. <laughs> and so obviously I wasn't 100% because I feel it much more now um, than I did then. And, I, and the truth is we have to just trust that Hashem does control it all, and, and this is good for us. You know, sometimes setbacks are good. Um, I had an experience, uh, I don't know how long ago, I'm losing track of time, but I, I had broken my ankle um, in a dodgeball tournament for Mag and David. <laughs> and <laughs> if you know me, I don't like to not be able to help myself or do anything. Um, and I was basically stuck. I had to be on a bed for the entire summer. I was not happy. Um, and, you know, I couldn't work. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't get, taking a shower was my event of the day. Um, so one day I looked at my desk in my room and I saw I had like a mountain of paperwork, which I usually wait till my not busy season to catch up on. But I'm not getting to the store, so let me catch up on it now. Anyway, it was new. My business was new, and we had just had the square and for the credit card right. charges. And I'm looking at my credit card receipts, and I'm looking at the receipts from the store, and the numbers are not matching. Oh, yeah. And I'm going through it, and every single credit card receipt is a mistake. I'm supposed to charge the customer, let's say $45. The credit card's charging $46.50. So I go on the app and I'm trying to understand what went wrong. And I realize that it's on a setting where it's charging an additional tax to the customer. And I said, oh my gosh, the entire summer for the last month or six weeks, I've been taking extra on every sale and, and not my money. Like I can't just keep this money. So the rest of the summer, I went through the receipts, I logged every name, I logged every amount that I owed, I contacted every customer and apologized, embarrassed, but I apologized, um, either gave them money back or they took, put it into that cow, whatever it is, but it was resolved um, until the last resolved issue happened the day before Rosh Hashanah. And I said to myself, if I didn't break my ankle, I would have taken all this money. Rosh Hashanah would come. I don't want to be judged for taking something that doesn't belong to me. So I was very grateful and I realized I was set back for a reason. Hashem was giving me the opportunity to, to save myself. 
Um, and it, you know, when there's downtime, it's a good time to get creative, um, take on things with the business that you always want to do, but you, you know, there's no time to do it. Um, I've been working on something from home that I'm not ready to share yet because it's in its early stages, but definitely the next level that I've always wanted to take with the business. Um, so, you know, there are definitely some positive things that come out of it. I can't wait to hear about that. And the next <laughs> we'll, we'll do a recap in six months. Yeah, you'll do my reveal for me. <laughs> um, okay, so continuing on the theme of the night is juggling. Now that you're home and whole family is home, any insight on how to tell us how you are balancing working from home, being at home, having everyone home? Right, so the balancing from home, um, I guess everything kind of shifted right now. Um, the priorities are not where they were. So um, I became like mama bear. I'm, I'm cooking, I'm homeschooling, God bless the teachers. Um, I'm doing homework and getting that all in. And then by the end of the day, when like around four o'clock, when I see everything else is ready to go, then I'll go to the store, I'll take care of the, the things that I need to take care of, the deliveries or whatever it is, paperwork. I get my hour or two in and then I come home and I'm back in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new routine. <laughs> Are you liking that extra time at home? Are you embracing it or is it you're itching to get back to being a business owner? Um, I'm happy. I mean, of course I miss the store. I love it. I love being there. But I'm happy. I'm, it's a gift, the time home with the kids and, and my husband around all the time. It's really, it's a gift. I mean, I would never give that up. Okay, great one. Um, okay, what tips do you have for other businesses that are at a standstill right now? So we got to stay positive. That's number one. I said it before, I'll say it again. Nothing lasts forever. Um, we go through roller coasters, ups and downs, and we're going to all get past this together. Um, so definitely stay positive. Um, I think the most important thing that we as a community really have to um, understand right now is that pre-corona, pre uh, many women that were in business were supporting families. They were bringing in the extra money. Many women were doing it as a hobby or to fill their time. I think that nobody could assume anything anymore after Corona when the dust settles. I think everyone has to really understand and not presume to know um, what people's finances are going to be like. And there's, there's a, we have a secret ingredient as a community for success. Um, you know, you, you watch the uh, Sephardic Heritage videos and you see how our great grandparents came to this country. And really, it's really, they had tremendous hardships. They really had to worry about the food on their table and a roof over their heads. And if you really look at it, and it's my belief that where did this tremendous beracha come from? You know, they went from being so poor and with nothing to this giant community with God bless us. We have homes, we have schools, we have organizations, we have, you know, the, the blessing of finance has been incredible. I believe, it, it's my opinion that it comes from helping each other. And you, you hear all the stories about Oh, you needed a job? Come work for me. Oh, you need money? Here's money. Oh, you want to start a business that's the same as mine? There was no such thing as competition. Of course, here's the contacts. Do the same thing I'm doing. Uh, if you're in my community, you're my brother, and, and I want to help you. And that was the feeling back then. And you hear Isaac Shalom and Joe Beta and all these stories of how they helped people look at the success they were able to achieve, not because they were out for themselves, but because they, they wanted everybody to do well and they helped each other. 
And I think that that's going to be the success and the secret to our success after all of this. Um, we, we have to, whatever we take a dollar out of our pockets, we have to support each other. And everybody could do it at their own level. Um, you know, whether it be you have savings and you can give someone a business free, I mean, an interest free loan to get their business back on track. That's tremendous. Um, you're a customer and you're going to buy milk, buy it from Kosher Corner instead of Costco. You need a book for your kid for school, call Kelly Mastery, don't go on Amazon. So all those little things, let's help each other, let's support each other. And I'm not saying to spend money you don't have, of course, but I'm saying if you're going to spend it, let's give back to our community. Um, Donald Trump loves to say, uh, make America great again. I want to say, let's make our community strong again. Um, and we're going to get there. We just have to really, you know, it might be a little bit harder. It's not a click away, like, like going online. But um, everything became a little harder today. Even opening, uh, you know, unloading our groceries and putting our food away became a million times harder but I really think it's gonna make all the difference. And I think we have to think of each other. Um, my husband and I, the other night, we said, wouldn't it be great if we had a directory of all the community businesses? And so this way they could write their business, what they sell. And if anyone needs anything, they just go look on the, you know, whatever it is, the app or the Instagram and say, okay, there's this service, there's this business and I, I could buy it from here. So I think, I think supporting each other um, is gonna be the key to us getting back on track. Okay, from your mouth to Hashem, I think that was beautiful. <laughs> You're so <laughs> amazing. The chat is lighting up. Those are all our questions. So let's see what everyone in the chat wants to say. A lot of people talking about how beautiful you look. Agreed, you look <laughs> Wanting to know who's your favorite sister, who's your favorite brother-in-law, who's your favorite nephew. Oh, hi, Gladys. Um, One thing that I really have to say, with the juggling, I, I miss this and it's really very important. Um, I think it's very important to know that sometimes we need help, the right help. Um, and in the store, I have the best employees. <laughs> they became we're really like a family and all we do is like, we just want to hang out. We love being together. Um, and they res we respect each other so much and they know how I like things and they know, um, they know, you know, what uh, energy I like in the store. And they're so good at running things when I can't be there. And I'm so grateful that they could do that, you know, that I could walk out and just feel I could go home and be with my kids and I'm not worried because they're, they're so good at what they do. And if they're on here, I love you guys and I miss you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so here's a question from Vivian Gindi. She wants to know, looking back, would you have done anything different when you began? No, because every, every mistake is not a mistake. It's a learning experience and you, you grow from it, and that's how you know not to make the same mistake again. So I would say no. Okay. Um, okay, people wanna know, what motivated you to start the business? I think we discussed that in the beginning. Do you wanna, something else that you missed about starting it besides finding the need and loving to? Um, what made you decide to do children? I mean, I know you said you felt like it wasn't, lower cost quality, but do you ever think about doing women's clothes? Were you only ever wanting to do kids' clothes? Um, so women's clothes, I feel like there's so much out there. I felt like it's the kids that needed more, especially the boys' clothing. There wasn't much of it out there. Right. Um, many times, you know, the men that come into the store ask, could you do it for men? <laughs> um, I always loved men's clothing, but I, I think um, I have enough going on, so I'm good with what I'm doing. Someone else do that. Um, okay, a lot of people who are your loyal customers and your friends, loving you, talking all about the beautiful, you also gave 
a lot of close to Beth El Azraqi, someone was mentioned. Oh, yes, yes. So that was one of the other fulfilling things. I, I They went on um, the Chesed mission, one of my friends, Claire, I think it was. Um, so I said, if you have an empty suitcase, come to my store and we'll load it up. And she was able to give all the orphans. Yeah. It was great. Candice Bailey wants to know, this is interesting, we touched on it a little. Were you ever concerned about competition? You said you didn't want to do women's clothes because you feel like there's enough out there, not just as a possible hurdle to yourself, but out of concern for the other business. Did you ever think about that? How, like feeling bad for, for them. Just Wondering if there's enough to go around, I guess. Or... Oh my gosh, there's, there's so much to go around. Um, I'm not going to say that that was an easy thing. I, that was part of my growth. In the beginning, I was always so nervous, like, what are they doing? What am I doing? Um, and then I remember thinking to myself about a race. And if you are you running to go somewhere and you have a goal, but you turn around to see where the person, you know, behind you is at, you forget where you're supposed to end up. So I had to really train myself. I, to not even look at what other people are doing. Um, I know men say you have to learn from what they're doing and be a better at what you're doing, but I think you become great by focusing on yourself and always becoming better and always, um, uh, you know, listening to what your customers ask for and trying your best to accommodate, you know, their needs and, and making yourself better that way. I don't, I think, if my competition is strong, then I'll be strong. I think we all need to be successful. And I think there's room for that. For sure. And you make each other better. Exactly. Did you, Richard had it, I wonder who that is, wants to know, did you ever want to quit and what made you change your mind? I did. So there was one point where I was so physically exhausted from boutique shows. I would, I would uh, come home late at night and I would have to unpack and repack and load the car and unload the car and just the whole day of on my feet. And I just, I couldn't take it anymore. So one night I told my husband, I said, I'm done. I can't, I'm too tired. I'm miserable. I don't have enough energy for the kids. I can't do it anymore. He says, so you don't want to do it because of the boutique shows? I said, yeah. He goes, so just don't do boutique shows. <laughs> so I said, Okay, that's another, fine. That's, so he, that's, that's another job in itself. Yeah, so he really encourages it, encourages me all the time. Whenever I'm, you know, if, I, if I'm down about work or if I had a bad day or he's very, thinks very straight and logical and he, he like reframes my mind and then I'm back where I started. Okay, that's a great story. Good question, Richard. Um, some of your customers just talking, someone says they, a couple of months ago, Terry Silvera, she shopped in his store for the first time for her four-year-old daughter. She bought a bunch of adorable dresses. She's so happy she came across your store and she can't wait to shop there after quarantine is over. What do you think makes your customers so loyal to you? What do you think it is about your store, about your customer service, about you, that makes them feel? Um, so I, I really, I try to think of myself as a shopper and what I would like. And I try to, I mean, I'm sure everybody's different, but that's what I try to, the energy that I try to bring into the store. Um, I, I don't like pushiness. I like positivity. I like smiles. I like helpful, you know, show me everything that you want to show me and the sizes that I need, but don't tell me I have to take it. So there's that uh, big balance that I like to, to, to portray in the store. Um, I also like, wanted the store to be very kid friendly. Um, I know kids hate to try clothes on and, and um, you know, it's like their worst thing to do. <laughs> so when I was making the store and Sarah Terzi, the Little Miss Organized and Sophia, they, they came and they decorated for me. I gave them my list of things. I, ha I told Sarah, I said, I need a playroom for these kids. They have to have Legos and they have to have a magnet board and we want books and I, I want it to be a positive, a happy experience for them. Sometimes now they don't want to leave the, the store. They're so busy playing. <laughs> and I the mother's like, I gotta go. I said I should have a mommy and me in there. You could do it with me. You guys did it? I'll do anything when this is over. If you want me to do it, <laughs> <I'll> do it. <laughs> mommy and me, girl. <laughs> I, mean, I, I get such a kick. It makes me feel so good when I have kids in the store and 
they put on a suit or a dress and I tell the boy, you look like a daddy. And I could see everything inside of him so happy. That's all he wants to hear in his life. Mm -hmm. And I tell the girl, you're a princess. And she twirls around in the dress. And, and to me, to be able to make these kids feel so good in, in what they're wearing and, and to be a part of all these happy occasions, brisses and weddings and, and just holidays. It's, it's family time. It's love. It's happiness. It's, it's really beautiful to be a part of it. Taking a, being a retail store to another level. You're using it to give kids confidence, to do a mitzvot, to bring it. It's so, it's, who knew that you could take like just something that looks like a on the surface, a simple business and use it for so much positivity in the world. Yeah, so I go to these parenting classes that I, I just, like, I need it now. It's for my mind. It's unbelievable. Esther Tawachi, she's incredible. But all of the things that I take away from there and I use it at home, I'm using it in the store. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm encouraging the kids. I want them to feel good. Um, and even the, the girls that work with me, they, they hear me do it and they, they do it also. They're very much on the same page as, as me when it comes to things like that. Okay, so a couple of people are asking about when you started out with your sources. So I know you said you were very picky and researching everything, but they want to know how did you get your foot in the door with the wholesalers? How did you have yes, so how did you land the accounts on? That was very hard. Like the buying took me at least, like I would say, six to eight months of, of just walking and, and looking and seeing things before I even spent a dollar. It was a lot of um, legwork. Like work, exactly. Um, it wasn't so easy. A lot of companies were only making expensive things. Um, everything was a brand when I first started. And uh, it wasn't easy. I, I took a, a few business trips with my husband um, we found different things from traveling. Um, and then the world changed a little where, you know, fashion was great and pricing got a little better um, and a little more local. So that was easier. And, um, you know, I started off selling $20 jeans, the color jeans when style at the time. And one time I was walking a show and I saw these beautiful dress shirts, uh, you know, beautiful colors. They were plaid, they were bright, vibrant colors. And I said, oh, like, I love those. I would, I would dress my kids in those. Should I buy them for the store? And I was so nervous because it was more expensive than I was used to spending. But I said, but I feel like I could sell it. So it was like a tough decision for me. Should I do it? Should I not do it? And so the person that was showing, the vendor that was showing it to me, he did me the favor. He said, look, just take a few, put them on the rack and see how it does. I'm not gonna make you meet the minimum. Don't worry about it. So I hung them in the store. It was the summertime. I had a concession and I think it was twist and shout. And that's how the boy business began because I hung up those few dress shirts and everyone just started buying them. And then the next season, I saw beautiful blazers that would look good with those shirts. And then I said, let me try a few blazers. And then they wanted dress pants to go with the blazers. And so it evolved into something very different than when I started. Amazing. Sari Kasten wants to know, how'd you pick the name My Get Up? I mean, oh, that's a good question, Mel. It's <laughs> a great question. Very good. So, okay, so what I did was, you know how when you go on the computer and you do a Google search, you type in, you just start to type in and then it gives you a list of, of options, right? Right. So I was going in ABC order. I went A, nothing cute came up, B, nothing cute came up. And then by the time I got to G, I saw it said get up and go. So I said get up. Get up means like a cool outfit. So I went into the dictionary just to make sure I knew what I was talking about. And there it was. It means it's a noteworthy outfit and an ex usually an extraordinary, beautiful outfit. And I said, I, I like that. I, I think that's a good, a good fit. And then we added the word my. Um, I remember adding it because I think maybe because on Instagram, the name was taken, just get up. Well, when I added the word my, I liked it even better because I gave each kid their own unique look. 
And I like that. I like that each kid gets to be who they are in their own outfit and have their get up. So that's how the name came out. <laughs> well, I love it. And I, I think that's the last of the questions in the chat, except everyone. Okay. What time is it? I didn't even look. Great. Um, it's 8.54. Anything else you want to add that we didn't get to that you want to um, say that you think we left out? I think that we... So no, I do have notes that I didn't look at the whole time. Let me see if I missed them. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable, so natural off the cuff. Yeah, unreal. Oh my gosh. Um, if anyone has another question, but I think that I read everything in the chat. You're amazing, everyone. Oh, there's one thing. Yes. So the thing I mentioned about um, the community helping each other and having that directory. Sure. So the other night I started an Instagram account that I thought we could just start up with. Um, if anyone is good with technology or, or anything that wants to help me, contact me. But basically I wanna, I wanna create a following and I want anyone who's in business in the community to send me an ad or a flyer or whatever it is about themselves and what they do and we'll post it and we'll have one place that everyone could look at and, and look through and say, you know, now I know where I could buy this, now I know who does this, and even if you're in the house or you have a service or you have, so it's called um, SY Local Businesses. I didn't do anything with it yet, all I did was create the account, but if we could- That's an unbelievable idea, thank God you didn't forget to mention this. That's I know, I have so special. much to say. So SY yeah. Local Businesses. Just SY Local Businesses, plural. And let's let's get it going. Let's create a following, and let's whoever wants to, you know, post their business and what they do. I love that, Marlene. That's so so what a great idea. Yeah, I think that's a great message to end off on: just community unity and supporting other businesses. For sure. And um, positivity. <laughs> yeah, keep on smiling. <laughs> We made it through without any children running and crossing, so it's okay. I know, no one came in the room. <laughs> Nobody's bothering me. And they're watching me from inside. Hi, guys. <laughs> um, okay, so thank you everyone for joining us. Julie, is there anything that I didn't touch on that we have to, any announcements? Uh, I read everything, all the questions. I think we covered everything. I think okay. we're good. Harry wanted me to mention tomorrow night. There's another center thing. Her, it's actually Sari Sutton's daughter. She's running a talk about um, the good enough parent. So I know we could all use some parenting tips. If you want to look on the center's Instagram, you'll see the next thing that they have for tomorrow night. To keep everyone busy. And awesome. Sounds great. Thank you, Marlene and Irene. You guys did amazing. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Marlene. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Really amazing. Bye, everybody. You guys were great. That was so fun. It really was. <laughs> How'd I go? You're unbelievable. You're natural. So inspiring.